then we're good. So, Laura, a proper official welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Yeah, good. Great. Good. Thanks. Happy um, to be Good. I'm going to start this off the same way, actually, that I started off with Chris Beeler, because both of you, I looked at your 17.1 scores, and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> that's, that's pretty impressive. How did you find it? Uh, yeah, it was cool. It was a good workout. I instantly saw it. So, like, obviously, the Open is this like massive thing which everyone has this big like anxiety over like we train all year round for this and so obviously this is like to put everything we've done from in the last year to the test so it's obviously a big anxiety around it um but I looked at the workout I got up in the morning like the previous years I've literally been like led in bed and got my phone out straight away and been like I need to know the workout like, I haven't even woken up but like this year like the, obviously it's only been the first one but I like woke up got myself a coffee like got my laptop out and looked at it like a bit more with a bit more of a decent head on rather than like straight away like bang I need to see it um so already I was just a bit more chilled out about it um but I looked at it straight away and was like, that just, that looks fun. My, my initial, my first thought was, shit, that's a lot of reps. Like straight away, I was like, that's a lot of reps. And it's going to be quick as well. So um, I instantly looked at it and was like, the pain is going to be, is going to be real. <laughs> and it <laughs> so, was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was the, um, what do you reckon sparked that change in between like, like getting up, checking your phone straight away and then like this year being a bit more chilled out about it? I think um, I think I'm a bit I'm better rounded as an athlete now. So I I used to sort of look at things and I had like some big gaps in my game, like big weaknesses. And I'm, whereas now I'm more rounded, so I, I, there's nothing I feel like that's going to come up that I'm going to be like I one I can't do, and two that I won't be able to do to some kind of decent level. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think maybe that and just a bit more. I'm, I'm trying to be a bit more relaxed. Like I'm, I'm naturally a bit of a hothead and that's just like how I am. So I'm, <laughs> I know I <I'm> something <laughs> I'm working on. Um, so I am trying to just be a bit more relaxed and chilled and got influences from all different places, but I am trying to be a bit more chilled. <laughs> okay. How did you go about breaking the reps down? Cause obviously you mentioned this a lot. Um, did, was there any kind of, um, for example, Chris said he broke down to five sets and then each one was like, he broke down the right hand and left hand, right hand and left hand. So, Okay, so I looked at it as in like it was five rounds. Um, so I wanted just to work through it round by round. But to be honest, it's probably the one open workout which I've least like had a game plan for. Um, I just thought I just need to start moving fast and keep moving and try and keep moving until it's done. Um, my, my game plan was to go out a bit faster than I thought I should do and then try and hold that pace for as long as I could. Um, I didn't stop at all, so I didn't break up the reps. So I didn't stop during the dumbbell snatches. Um, in the set of 50, I thought I would probably want to, but actually I was like, I'm nearly done by now, so just fucking keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might as well by that point. Yeah, but then it's like that thing. Like I've, I finished on Saturday, and rarely do I finish an open, open workout and be like, I'm happy with that. But I finished and was like, I'm happy with my time. I think that was a, a decent time. Um, and I'm still happy with my time now, even after seeing obviously the whole scores. Um, but then you just see some, like Europe is such a strong region, especially mm. for the women. And see these like crazy times, like nine minutes stuff going up and you're thinking like, why can I do that? And I'm always like, it's self-critical in that sense of being like, well, if they can do that, I should be able to do that. Um, and then try and think around ways of how I'm gonna be able to do that. Um, but it was one of those ones where it was brutal and it did like rip you apart a bit. So um, I did I did try and repeat on Monday um, and I was obviously this workout had really nice splits. So you could see exactly where you were throughout the workout. Um, and I said to who was judging me, um, if I'm behind at any point, then um, stop me. If I'm not ahead, at least by 10 seconds, stop me because I don't want to do the whole reps. Like the last 50 snatches that if I do that for no reason, then that's going to have quite an effect impact on my training for the rest of the week. Um, and I was, I tried again. I did the 40 snatches, the 15 burpees, and I was like eight seconds behind my split. So I just pulled the plug. I thought there's no point in continuing. Yeah. And it, it hit me so much harder than the first time as well. Okay. So, yeah, I think I put everything in the first time and it mm. might not have been the best score in Europe, but it was the best I had and I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, feel free to pass on this, like like any question that's going to come up, but um, you mentioned having some outside influences to kind of cool you down. Um, yeah. 
if you, if you want to pass, that's absolutely fine. And we can move on to the next thing. But uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I can answer that. Um, so one, there's there's probably two that are massive. So one is uh, Alec Harwood, who's my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably the complete opposite character to me in the sense that he is much more relaxed and chilled out. And he's the one saying, Lord, just like, stop stop what you're doing and just calm the fuck down and also uh paul warrior he's my coach um he again is quite similar in the sense of being like um he uses this phrase of like stay in your own lane which i really love because it it was exactly what it says on the tin like just focus on what you're doing don't worry about what's going on around you and just by taking that one small bit of helpful information that has really helped me massively because i am i mean we're all massive sort of culprits of leaderboarding wondering what everyone else is doing like the world of social media nowadays like um you're looking at what someone else is doing and thinking oh my god i i can't do that or i should be doing that or i should be doing it faster or i should be lifting more weight um so you're constantly second guessing yourself constantly and i think with the whole stay in your own lane thing that has stopped me i'm not saying i'm a hundred percent and i never see what other people are doing and feel like oh my god i should be doing that but i like believe in my training that i'm doing so i'm a hundred percent trust it uh i trust paul with what he's doing and i just feel a bit more confident in the sense of being like no like i'm good i'm gonna be fine i just need to do my own thing and let everyone else do theirs yeah i was about to see you seem a lot more confident this year it's it's really good to see um is there have you ever tried anything like meditation or anything kind of mindsetty like that or anything like that? i have yeah um so again, this is from Alec. He um he got the Headspace app. Yeah. And I did do a, I did a bit of it, but again, it was it kind of made me feel really shit because I'd like put it on, and it would be telling me to like, obviously like relax and like f- have, think about how all the bits of your body felt, and I could do that. And then within like thirty seconds, I'm like, oh, what was I snatching yesterday? Like, what was this percentage? What was this? And what am I doing tomorrow? My back's squatting. And I'm like, I want to do pull-ups. I want to do muscle-ups. And then I'm like thinking about all these things. And then it's the whole point of that is to like, for me not to be thinking about mm-hmm. those things. And then I'm like, oh, I can't do this. And yeah. I like to win shit. Like, I, like, I want to win everything. Mm-hmm. Um, even if that's not possible, like, I at least want to try and win everything. Um, so even just like small little mental wins like that, I'm like, fuck, so I didn't do that. I can't yeah. do this. I can't even do Headspace, which is an app. I lost at Headspace. <laughs> um, so I have tried and it's something that I do want to continue to try um, and try different things. But um, yeah, so I'm not a massive... Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> they, they completely depend, to be honest, on where you are in the mindset at the time of trying them. Like They are for some people and they are for other people, depending on like which kind of mindset model you're in. But um, yeah. what's, your, what's your why at the moment? Why are you training? Um, because I love it. Okay. Like That's a really simple thing yeah. for me to answer. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Um, so I'm still in a full-time job. I work, I'm an administrator at a university, so I have like a really normal office job where I sit at a computer all day and do this, <laughs> um, which I don't love. But hopefully one day some things will change for me and I'll be able to train more. Um, but to be honest, it works for me quite well at the moment because I go to work like I work eight till half four. Um, and then as soon as I step in the gym, I'm like, bam, like I'm here to train now. Like I know some people that are in the gym a lot of hours during the day and they've got classes and PTs and by the time it comes to train, like their motivation is pretty low and they're like, oh, now I've got yeah. to motivate myself to train. I rarely feel like I have to motivate myself to train. I feel like that motivation is, I'm a very hungry person like, in more than one sense, but I'm always hungry and like, I want to do the best I can. I don't really know what that is all the time, but I know I want to do it <laughs> and I want to find out what that is. So, Do you have a clear objective? Is it like I'm working towards X or like whatever position at regionals or the games or anything like that? So I think um, definitely like one day I want to get to the games. Like I used to not really believe that statement when I said it and be like, well, I just, I can't because all of these girls that I've got to compete against, which is true. Like the girls that I have to compete against, are like fucking insane it's mental and it? it's like but i'm i'm still young like i've had a lot of experience in like in crossfit i started when i was 19 um so now i'm 24 so i've been doing it for five years already and i'm still really young so i've got a and it, also like if you don't believe it yourself and it's never going to happen so like why not like why couldn't i so it's one of those things that yeah i'm definitely going to work towards it um i think 
short term goals as in the now um once you've there's kind of the stigma like once you've qualified for regionals then you're a regionals athlete and that's it then and then if you then don't qualify again year upon year it's kind of you feel like shit and obviously because so anyone that's been to regional team or whatever i've had a few years of experience in team and individual um so i'm really lucky in that sense and i always am thankful for that um but Sorry, my computer was telling me my Wi-Fi was bad, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, mine is too. Um, it's fine. <laughs> okay, no, it's still there. We're still yeah. talking. Um, yeah, so um, regional sense, it's like you're in your mind, you're like, well, I have to go because I've been every year. Um, and I don't know if you know, but last year I was really sick. Um, yeah. I got swine I got swine flu in February. Nice. Um, yeah, it was literally <laughs> the worst experience of my entire life. So it was, we basically went to... Um, I feel like people that are tuned in now might be like, oh, there she goes again, fucking banging on about it. But it was a significant point in my life, to be honest, that when it sort of happened, I was like so ill, I didn't even care. I was like, I couldn't care less about training. Like, I just want to die. I feel so awful. And we were at the Best of British camp up at JST. Mm -hmm. So we were training um, for like, it was I think it was a three day camp and we were training like three times a day and we were like, all of us were just smashing ourselves like in these workouts. But because we were like, like compete against each other, we were like just really going for it. So I was putting everything out on the table. Um, I'm happy to admit that. Um, and I'm not used to the volume of training of that we were doing too because I sit in an, office, in an office at a desk for eight hours a day and then suddenly I was training three times a day for a couple of days and I was obviously had this illness in me dormant as well so um and I literally was driving home from Manchester which back to Bath quite a long way so it was like good four hours and I got home and it was literally as if someone pulled the plug out the back of me like I was just like boom gone I had this horrendous headache like nothing I can ever sort of describe and I just felt so awful I was like this is not good and then the weeks went by the weeks went by and I just wasn't getting any better at all um, and I was pretty much like housebound for a good like four weeks um, which for me was just like awful and obviously the time of year it was and it was getting closer and closer to the open um so i was just starting to shit myself being like why the hell is this happening to me like it's really unfair why is it me like i just don't get it and then i was like clean i was so i was going in and back to the doctors and i was like you have to make me better like you have to make me better i've got to be better for this and they were like you're gonna be like this for six weeks like don't do anything because the, the, if you go and do anything which i couldn't at the point i was like I, do, I could barely get myself to the doctors let alone train but i was just all i could think of was like what can i do to make myself better um i could barely eat because i felt so oh, it was just awful like i i had my flu vaccination this year so i cannot get it again <laughs> um but yeah so i was really sick um and then i was sick all the way up until the beginning of the open so that was about six weeks i did no training at all literally at home um and then 16.1 comes out and i was looking at it like fuck that would have been a really good workout for me that was my initial thought and then i was like i'm just gonna wait and wait and wait and hopefully i'll be feeling like i can at least go into the gym and just try and do it um which i did and it was a stupid mistake I shouldn't have done and I shouldn't have done any of the qualifiers um I should have just said no I'm too ill but I did and I've actually watched some of my videos back recently and I just look like the shell of a person I am like I'm just gray and it's horrible but I did 16.1 um which probably was the kind of worst workout like a 20 minute slog <laughs> <laughs> um and I literally led on my back when I finished and cried for about 45 minutes because I, I just I knew I knew then it was gonna I, I automatically was like it's over I'm not going back to regionals because I finished 126 in that workout um, I did it on the Monday right at the end because I had to do it and um, for myself but it's pathetic now I feel stupid but um, at that point in my life I was like I need to do this like this is the be all and end all for me mm. um, and I've learned my lesson the hard way so yeah and after then i did all the i did all the qualifiers so i didn't actually qualify um in the top 30 but i, I think i came like 34th or 36th 
Um, so then I got an invite, which I kind of felt like I'd given my individual invite up for team like two or three times previously. So I was like, I kind of feel like I'm owed one of them back. Um, so I was like, yeah, cool. Um, went to regionals. Um, I was so run down and like not in a good shape and not in a good way and all of that shit. But um, yeah, I wasn't in the best position to be going into regionals at all. Um, I had a bit of a wrist injury as well, which I'd picked up from probably training when I was sick. So my body was just trashed. Um, so then I did the first day, um, which was, which was cool. I really enjoyed the snatch ladder. Didn't perform as well as I wanted to or should have done, but that was because I hadn't snatched for like eight weeks. <laughs> so not ideal going into a snatch event. Um, but I tried my best. So that's all you can do. Um, I went into that with the mindset of being like, like really there's no way I should be on this floor. So I need to like enjoy every single second. And I really appreciate the fact that like not everybody gets to go to regionals and know what it feels like to stand in that stadium. So I really like try and be present in the moment in that time to be like, this is fucking cool. Like look at all of these people and like, really like I'm just a really normal person that has a normal job and a normal life. And I just do cross it because I enjoy it. So still now for like all of these people that like follow me on Instagram and like, you like really inspire me to go to the gym and like do stuff. And I'm like, that is so cool. Like I, I would never have thought I'd have that impact on people. So um taking a bit of a u-turn but that's i really want to try and use that as much as i can to help other people sort of do something cool with their life because that's all this is like it's got so big and so serious but we all just do it because we like doing it so it's i don't really think it's nothing more nothing less like it's what you make of it yeah definitely what do you think the the illness taught you um, like I said, it was a huge point in my life and at the stage when it was happening, I didn't know, but um, definitely a year down the line, I can now look at it and think like, wow, I really learned a lot about myself. Um, I learned that I am fucking headstrong and I'm like, I'm going to do this, like, e- even if even if it kills me, that I'm going to do it and I'm going to try my absolute hardest. Um, and and I did and like through the opens and all of the qualifiers I just like went for and I think actually the fact that I was like so low down on the leaderboard and um, that actually made me I mean I performed to the best I could at that stage but where I was I was like I, I've got a climb so I need to just I need to do something I need to pull something out of the bag and um, and in a way that's given me huge confidence to think well I could do it then so why can't I perform like when I'm well um but obviously it doesn't always work that way and this year already the open's weird because we've had like this weird extension and (laughs) yeah yeah. it's all gone crazy and like people are redoing on like redoing the workout on like Tuesday and Wednesday (laughs) like like that's never happened before so we're all in this kind of like unknown territory of being like what the hell's going on um and it's something that actually it hasn't really sat that well with me people repeating on Tuesdays and Wednesday because I'm like well it's not really the rules but I, I do agree with people saying well everyone's in the same boat but I also think but the like the deadline was Monday so yeah. you shouldn't and also if your school was like locked into the leaderboard and that was that and your like affiliate had verified it then why do it again and I just feel like maybe those people probably couldn't have put in their best performance on their first go without knowing other people's scores. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, at, like at regionals and competitions, you don't get the chance to do the workout twice if you fuck up. So I'm not saying I've never repeated a workout. Like I said earlier, I tried to repeat it and tried to do better on Monday. Um, but like in a normal situation, like you wouldn't get that opportunity. So mm-hmm. I just think, why like, why sort of pretend? I mean, it's just a weird situation that we're in. But um, I'm really glad that it's shut now because I feel like I I posted on Facebook earlier. I was like, I feel like 17.1 has been going on for about 25 years. Oh, definitely. And <laughs> I'm like so done with 17.1 now. <laughs> what, go- <laughs> what goes through your heads like in the the let's say the hour before? Actually, no, the, the few seconds before a workout. What's going through your head right now? 
Um, to be honest with you, like I generally think like that's the time when I, I switch off the most. Okay. Um, and not much goes through my head. I'm just like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to enjoy it. Um, I think with, with workouts, I, I definitely, I know some people, uh, everyone's different, but like within when I'm doing a workout, especially if I'm at a competition, I really don't know what's going on around me. Um, I used to be pretty bad at like, you know, when you're like staring down the lane next to you and be like, what's she doing? Where's she going? Um, and how many reps have they done? Like, are they nearly done? Are they nearly finished? And I used to be really bad in that sense. I am trying to be better in the sense of being like, it's me. Uh, and I can only like, I know this is something that people always say, but you cannot control what other people do. Um, so why try and waste your energy and thinking about what they're doing? And like I said, please, I'm, I am not the best at this. And I'm saying this as if I'm like preaching to people and saying, this is the way you should be. But like, this is the way that I want to be. And I want to be like a hundred percent thinking about what I'm doing, not what other people are doing. Um, exactly. So sorry, I'm not, I am answering your questions. No, but no, just that's going off on a huge tangent. <laughs> Tangent's cool. That's how I roll. And what about when, when like the intensity hits and you're kind of in the pain cave? What's going through your head then? Um, I, I tend to like really think about like which parts of my body are starting to break down and then try and be like, no, you're fine. Like this has happened so many times in training, like the amount of times in training this year that I've like literally cried real tears because I've been in so much pain, not as in like injury pain, just as in like, I hurt so much from this, like this stimulus of this workout. And like when you train to that, to that point, like that's what we're training for. We're training to feel that way. So I'm like, I've, I felt worse than this, but like, I can always, when I'm hurting in a workout, I can normally think, well, I hurt more when I did this. So this is fine. Where does that drive come from? Um, I honestly think I'm just naturally competitive. So uh, when I was a kid, I did, uh, when I was like really young, I did kickboxing um, when I was tiny. So I used to, um, there was a boy in school that used to like try and like bully me and like push me around a bit. Cause I'm, I mean, I'm really small now. I'm only five foot. Um, and at school I was so tiny. <laughs> I was always the smallest little person. And yeah, this boy was a bit of a bully and tried to push me around a bit. So my mum was like, you're going to kickboxing <laughs> and I was like okay cool so we went I went to kickboxing I absolutely loved it and we had like all the sparring kit and we just used to like basically there's like little five-year-olds just kicking the shit out of each other. <laughs> um but I love doing that and I think and we, I remember we used to do like um what's the exercise when you like uh lean up against the wall and like sit in like a chair position oh yeah yeah like a wall squat hold or yeah or like, like a yeah. wall squat hold. And I remember being like literally like six, seven years old and like holding this wall squat hold and being like, this burn is fucking cool. I really (laughs) like it. I think I've always had that kind of uh, like competitive edge and I've always want to be better than the person next to me, Um, which is not always a good thing. Um, But yeah, and then I went on to ride horses uh, competitively. So, and again, me and my sister both rode horses and we were we're both of us are so competitive so we pushed each other like every time my dad used to take us off to shows and I'd come back with a like a trophy and my sister would come like third and we'd be like feuding in the lorry on the way home um but yeah I think that's where it's all come from like it's from a really young age I think we've I went to a school where I did athletics um and like we did the highlight of my year was like English schools when we went down and just, I did uh 1500, 800, 200 relay, like long jump as many, basically as many of the exercises that Miss Bacon, who was our teacher would let me do literally. I'll be like, can I do all of them? Because I love it. <laughs> um, and like that, especially on like the 1500, 800, like that burn I would get in my lungs. I'd be like, this is so cool. Like I, and other kids at school be like, I hate PE, like it's cold. And I'll be like, get me outside. I love it. <laughs> like get in the mud. But yeah, I think I've always been competitive and sport has always been like a massive part of me. And yeah. I, I really don't, I mean, if it wasn't CrossFit, it would be something else. So yeah. like, and that's obviously when I found CrossFit, I found weightlifting, um, which I love as well. So yeah. that yep. has taken me down a different route. Yeah. 
what's because like i want to come to weightlifting anyway what's the what's the like again the three four seconds before you lift what's going through them um lots of different things i think weightlifting is so different to crossfit um in the sense of there's like there's no margin for error well there's like three margins for error <laughs> you have three lifts and like if you if you fuck that up basically like that could be a lot of what you've been training for to go down the drain um and i have a lot of respect for weightlifters um since working like in within weightlifting uh, in the sense that they are just like proper troopers uh like weightlifting training uh crossfit training is really hard but weightlifting like it batters you and yeah. everything hurts and it's not necessarily like i i would say crossfit is really fun like we get to like swing ourselves around on bars and rings and it's really good fun but weightlifting sometimes like isn't that fun when you're just doing pulls and like squats and day after day because it's yeah. not like in our training when like i will snatch once a week and i'll clean and jet once a week and pull once a week and squat maybe twice whereas they do that like every day so it's really repetitive um and the weight categories like i was always quite lucky because i lifted in under 53s um which then i'm now over that i'm about 55 56 kilos um but when I was lifting uh, more regularly, I was always under 53. So I was always like 51 kilos. So um, I was really lucky in that sense. We went yeah. to a training camp in Barcelona, which I was really lucky to go to and be invited to. So um, it was a whole like world-class program. So it was like Zoe Smith, Mercy Brown, Sarah Davies, Emily Godley, um, all and Noren, who was also a 53 lifter. Yeah. Uh, we, we got invited onto the camp because we weren't actually on the world-class program. Um, and we got invited to Barcelona, which was like, I was like, literally my life can't get nice. any better than this. Nice. Um, and then we went there and we were as like an Olympic training facility. So, I mean, I would sit, like I said, sit in an office like Monday to Friday. And then the next week I was in Barcelona lifting an Olympic, like weightlifting That's facility. Cool. And I was like, this is so cool. And we did a competition at the end of the week, which was on um, the platform that was used at the Barcelona Olympics. Nice. That's and awesome. And I was like, this is so cool. Like, I, so yeah, I'm really lucky in the sense of, it's actually really easy to forget like some of the experiences that you've had, which I'm really lucky to have had. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Who's the first person you think of when you think of a mindset um, or an athlete with a great mindset? Um... I think Sam Briggs always comes back to me here. Like I know Sam quite well, obviously she's yeah. been around for a long time. And um, I remember the first competition that um, I did and it was the battle of London. Yeah. I think it was called the battle of London then. And it was at Brunel university. And she was like, you need to, you, you need to eat more food. Like you're too skinny. And I remember her <laughs> telling me that. Um, but, since then like i've become really friendly with her and see her quite a lot and her her mind frame and just how she's she's so relaxed and if you see her before work like before any uh competitions and workouts she literally just stands there with her eyes shut and like and i like the fact that like no one knows what she's thinking then like that's that's like private and i almost hope that she never shares with people like what she's thinking then but um it's she you, you, she's so in control like you can tell she's like I'm so in control of this. Like whatever's going to happen now, it's all down to me. And I just, and then obviously she goes and like smashes everything. Yeah. And I think obviously she's like known as the engine. She's got this crazy, crazy engine that she can just keep going, keep moving. But that's definitely a mental, that's she, her mental capacity like allows her to do that because she's still human. Like you're still going to hurt at some point, but she can just keep pushing through that hurt. And if we could all train ourselves to do that, we'd all be a lot better athletes, I'm sure. <laughs> what do you think makes a great athlete? Um, lots of different things. Um, I think it's definitely the whole like um, nature, like nurture debate of whether you're born with talent or you create talent with what you've got. Um, I think it's definitely a mixture of both. Um, but I think attitude is such a big, a big thing. Um, to be honest, I think maybe the definitely the first like the first couple of years when I had, was properly into CrossFit as in competing, like not when I just started. But I think I I had a really bad attitude, and 
that made me not be such a good athlete in the sense of not a bad attitude. Like I thought I was better and above everyone else, but I think my attitude to training is just so different now. Um, I was just quite negative in the sense of being like, Oh, like this is hard. This is tough. Whereas like no one's fucking got a gun to my head and forcing me to be in the gym. Like it's all my own choice. So if you want to be better, like you have to do that yourself. Like it's, no one's just going to be like, here you go. You can have that for free. So like you've got to work hard and and I think even like now when I've like I finish I get into the gym so I finish work at half four I literally go home get changed get straight in the gym and um train for like three hours and get all my accessory work done and but that's because like I want to do that because I want to get better and I I still think sometimes it's when people say like why like you asked me why earlier and it is because I enjoy it but there's not like a specific thing like I'm not training because like I obviously would love to get to the games one day, but that's not my main, that's not my main feat of why I train every day. Like I train every day because I like the way it makes me feel. Um, I like the fact that it makes me feel strong, like strong. And I've never had that feeling before where I'm like, I can do that. And like, look at someone doing like a heavy clean jerk. And I'm like, I can put that weight over my head and, that's a really like that's a really powerful feeling especially for a woman I think as well and I love what CrossFit has done for women in sport um and for me that is a massive thing I'm just like and little girls that come we've got a CrossFit kids class and one of the mums came up to me the other day and she was like uh my daughter thinks you're amazing she loves you and I'm like oh my god that is so cool like she looks up to me like to do sport and that is really cool like no matter what sport like that particular little girl wants to go into like she might not have done that before and for me that is just so powerful like that we can help the generation below us like do something pretty cool with their lives because like this our generation especially like you see just people just wasting away and it just it makes me sad to be like but you could be doing stuff that's really cool and and that and I say going on to CrossFit and um, having like a bad rep and I really hate that because I'm like I've seen it change people's lives like never in a negative way never once have I seen it change someone's life in a bad way um only good like really good as well um so that kind of angers me. But. Yeah, yeah. That, that driver of the of um, you mentioned like you don't really have a why. Like it's I always say it's like it's who you want to become. It's yeah. it's, it's the person you want to be. Like the people forget the like they think it's the what how and then they think why is the last bit. But it's it's who and it's like yeah. in terms of your mindset there, like it's definitely who you want to be. Yeah, and I think not only does it make. I mean, training changes your body physically, obviously. Um, but mentally, training has helped me through like lots of things in life. And we all have like, n no one's perfect. No one's got everything right. And I completely admit that. Like, I have not got everything sussed at all. And there's so many things more that I need to learn and get right. Um, and you've just kind of got to play the game and like, go along with it and see what happens um but i love i love what training does for me um and i think that everyone should do some kind of training in some capacity just purely for what it does for you mentally um and you can do so much and i think that's so cool like i'm always like i can push my body to a point where i'm like that's so cool i never i never thought i'd be able to do that like even yeah. last night i was like I had like three one mile repeats at like a pretty fast pace as well as fast as I could go. And it was like pissing it down with rain. And I was running down like Moreland road, which is like a like local street to us, which has got like loads of shops in it. And there's like people coming out with like fish and chips and like pizza and like walking past me. And I'm like, <gasps> I could like smell it as I'm running past, but there's not one part of me, which would have wanted to be on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Like I just love the way it makes me feel. And after training like obviously you get those endorphins which are like is all like the scientific part of it but the way you feel like when you walk out of the gym i'm like that's so cool like think about what you've achieved and actually when um i always write my training down in a like a it's just like a blank book but i 
I'm always writing everything down. Um, and my notes to myself that I read back sometimes, I'm just like, <laughs> what was I going on about? I'm like, ah, oh, this was fucking hard. This is too hard. Or like, love this. And I love seeing my little points because it sort of takes me back to how I felt in that session. But I can always do that. Like I can always get straight back into how I felt then. Okay. Um, and I love to look back when I finish a training diary to like flick back through like all of those pages. And you're like, I've done all of that training, like over the last five years, all the training I've done. And I think that's pretty incredible to like, be like, that's just, that's your book of like what you've done in your life. And it's not like to show off to other people and be like, this is what I've done. This is what I've done. I've achieved this. I've gone here. But like, it's just for you to know and you to be like, that's really fucking cool. I've done that. <laughs> yeah no it's exactly it's like um it's like journaling in kind of day-to-day -day life it's, it's yeah. exactly the same it gives you a uh as you said like a snapshot of the way you're feeling at that time and it's, it's amazing yeah. to look back through and go like that's how you were um it's a good outlet as well mm -hmm. to be like i think writing down things and that's something that alec told me so like after i was ill last year i went through a pretty bad mental like stage and mm -hmm. i was not good at all like i think from and then when I went to regionals, like I basically had a really bad experience with a judge and my regionals was cut short. And after all of what had happened throughout the year, it was just a massive head fuck. Like it really, really head fucked me. And I came off the floor after I basically was capped and I came off the floor and I was just it was all a bit of a, you know, like in films where you see people like if something really bad happens and everything's just a bit hazy and I didn't really know what, had, whether it had really just happened or whether it was just like a really bad dream. And I was like, this kind of happens like after the whole year. And then I actually got here, which was like against all odds. I actually got here and now this has happened. And I was just like, and to be honest with you right then, I was ready to completely give up and be like, fuck this why am I doing this to myself I felt so like I felt so down I had no confidence in my ability I was like I shouldn't be here I shouldn't be here anyway and now I'm here I just I didn't ever really think oh I've made a fool out of myself or which is weird because I was in an arena of like however many thousand people on the regional stage capped in a workout and then told that I couldn't continue in front of all these people which like are obviously looking at the athletes thinking oh they're pretty good athletes that's why they're here and I obviously wasn't but um so that was kind of a hard thing for me to deal with um and when you kind of put all your eggs in one basket which we kind of do as as regional athletes um and then it all goes tits up and you've got nothing to fall back on mm. um and I won't make that mistake again of making it my everything in the sense okay. of like me and Aleph now we're like in the process of buying a house like we've got really cool things happening in our lives and it's I mean I love training I would never stop training um and I want to get back to regionals and I want to go to the games one day and there's loads of things that I want to achieve but there are other things as well like yeah. it's not if you if you fail a lift in training or you don't make something you want to make like make sure you have something to look back on and be like yeah but I have really cool friends and like, I have a really nice family who are always looking out for me. And I think that's really important to have those things that you can fall back on yeah. and as your safety net. Because when something like that happens, like it did to me at regionals, um, something that was out of my control as well. So I basically got capped on the warble workout um, for depth in my squat, yeah. um, which something for me is probably like one thing that I probably have never struggled with like depth in the squat um and it, it was really baffling at the time and I was really confused about why I was getting no rep and and I couldn't correct it because I couldn't correct it because I was already doing it yeah um but it was just a bit of a struggle and after that whole thing I was just like well, what do I go away and do like do I go away and like take a bit of time off and which I did do and I think that helped me massively um but I think my point is I'm rambling on about my experience but I think the point is that if something happens to you like that and you're just a bit like oh my god I've worked so hard for this and now it's just all gone up in smoke I think you need to like really just look at things and be like oh but like 
I didn't die and one of someone I loved didn't die like it's okay and it's okay to like fuck up and make mistakes yeah. as long as you learn from them and then go like I've come back so much hungrier now and and I won't make that mistake again of being like um just acting the way I did as well after it happened um I was really angry and blamed everything and blamed the judge and blamed me being ill and blamed everything but like in reality like it was only again like I am the only one that control what I controls what I do um so therefore I'm responsible for that um and I was responsible for that um but at the time it was really hard to admit that um but I think now I've totally got my head around it and and if it was to happen again, because like, it might, there's no, like, there's no things. I think I would deal with it in a very different way. Um, but that experience has molded me as an athlete, definitely. Mm. No, I love that it's given you that perspective. It's, it's great to see that you've just kind of taken a step back and gone, okay, like this is the situation for what it really is, rather than like obviously in the moment you're wrapped up in it and just like it yeah. is everything. What was the conversation with Alec like after that? Oh, at regionals? Yeah. Um, obviously, so Alec was competing as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so for him and he was, I think he actually was watching, so in the athlete area, there's like a big TV, um, which is like live stream of the arena. Yeah. So he, I think he knew already what had happened before he saw me, which I mean, I just couldn't put myself in his shoes. If that was him that had just had that happen to him. Like, I mean, how do you console somebody when that happens? Like, mm what do you say? And he, he didn't need to say anything to me, to be honest, that I knew he was like, I'm here for you. Just go and do your own thing. Like get out of this arena, get out. Cause I just didn't really want to see anybody because I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't, I was, I was ugh, embarrassed. Isn't the word, but I just wanted to like act like it never happened and just be like, can I just enjoy this weekend now? Like, I've had such a shitty year and I was like, I just wanted to enjoy this weekend. And now like that privilege has been taken away too. So it was just kind of a non-starter from the beginning. Mm. But, um, yeah, he, he's great with me to be fair because I can be really difficult and I am a bit of a hothead and, um, and I know I'm like that, but yeah, he deals with me pretty well. He's very patient. <laughs> so thanks, thanks Al <laughs> it's a yin and yang thing it's awesome. shout out to Al <laughs> <laughs> how do you maintain consistency because I'm guessing despite your your love for training and the and the fact that you really do feel good and it's like it's you're one of the few people I think I speak to is like yeah I fucking love that feeling I really really love that feeling how do you I'm sure you get days that you're like I don't know actually fancy training but you still want to get to or be that person so how yeah. do you how do you maintain that then? So definitely, um, I mean, especially like like I don't know, I don't know if you work in an office or you maybe you have in at some point. But I think there's a lot of people hopefully listen that will relate to this. There's like this three o'clock lull at work when you're like, oh my god, especially because I'm eating a lot at the moment as well. So I like as soon as I eat a lot of food, my body's like shut down you need to digest this food you're not allowed to do anything else and in the afternoon where i'm literally like i look at like i'm constantly looking at my program and like all day at work i'm like oh, i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this it's gonna be so cool and then like by the afternoon i'm like oh, i cannot envisage myself doing like i don't know like 90 kilo cleans tonight i literally can't see that happening because i'm sat there like a robot thinking how the hell am i going to do that but and I do, and I leave work and I'm like driving home, like with my eyes, like all droopy, I'm, like trying to drink some coffee and like, but as soon as I get home and like get my food in me and get to the gym, I'm like, no, this is cool. Like as soon as I feel like as soon as I step foot in the gym, I'm like, right, this is, I'm going to do this. Like, this is fine now. Don't get me wrong. There are days where even I go into the gym and I'm like, I'm tired. I'm too tired. I can't do this. But I think at the end of the day, like if you do feel like that, just you either push through and work for something because you want it or you don't and risk not doing what you want to be able to do. So there's like, there's literally two options. And I always say to people, like if they're moaning about training and like, Oh, I've got all this programming, blah, 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 blah. Like don't do it then. Like no one's, like I said, no one's got a gun to your head. <laughs> As you don't have to, like it's no one's forcing you. Um, 
And I think this is what's funny about all these repeats as well. Um, obviously, like people that are re- repeating the first workout because they want to go to regionals and that's fair enough. I kind of get that. Um, I don't agree with it as such, but I do get it. Um, but the people sort of that are in the like lower down the leaderboard and their ambition is to not get to regionals and it's just to do the best they can. Like when they're like, oh, I've got to redo this workout. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't not at all just enjoy it the first time round. like put in the best effort like there's no pressure i think pressure like pressure can be a really good thing and a really bad thing um it depends like how much and how you put it onto yourself um and other people shouldn't be putting pressure on you i think that's the point like you can put pressure on yourself, but other people shouldn't be pressuring you and be like, you need to do this. You need to do that. That's where you need to turn around and be like, mm, no, because I don't want to do that. Like you're in control. Um, and I think, like I said, I've been working with Paul Warrior and he's now my coach, which he's really, I've really learned a lot to be honest um, about myself and how I mentally prepare myself for training and just like generally just like being less of a twat <laughs> <laughs> is there anything um, that he's really passed on sorry to interrupt um probably be less of a twat <laughs> <laughs> he's never been he never turned around to me and be like oh sure you're a twat <laughs> um, and to be honest like i know that he wouldn't have of, wouldn't have like agreed to work with me because I know that he's quite selective in who he works with and only he will only work with people if he knows that he's going to get on with them and um, he's he knows what he wants and I really sort of respect that um, and yeah I think I've learned that I need to trust in my own ability much more um, which I have started to do like I used to look at some of the workouts especially when I first started uh, with his programming I'd look and be like there's no way I can do that. I wouldn't necessarily voice it, but I'd look at it and be like, I can't do that. Like I did um, a wave of like with some clean emons and they like went up in weight and with like a shitload of wall balls, a shitload of pull-ups, like all on the minute. And I'd look at the reps and be like, I can't do that. I can't do 85 kilo cleans, like four reps on the minute. I can't do that. But then I would like do it and actually like, yeah, I would literally drag my ass through it. But I actually could do it sometimes. Like some days I couldn't, which was also a good lesson to be like, well, I really want to be able to do that. So how can I make myself be able to do that? Um, And then some days when I could do it, I was like, shit, maybe I just need to believe in myself a little bit more. Um, But yeah, he uh, helps me stay pretty chilled um, in, in a good way, not like too chilled out as in like, oh, it's fine. Everything's fine. I don't care if I'm like 80th, going into week five of the open night um yeah he's really helped me screw my head on and find that sort of find that love for training again cool that's awesome that's really yeah. good what's the first 90 minutes of your day look like 90 minutes yeah. um to be honest i am so bad at getting out of bed like i have to because i'm an adult and i have a job so i have to get out of bed <laughs> which, which really sucks i like um, the way you're persuading yourself that you're an adult yeah i uh, i'm well i'm really trying to be an adult i'm 24 so i feel like i should probably try now but um yeah so i i normally i'm one of those horrible people that snooze like five times um and when al doesn't have to get out of bed before me he's like i can tell he's so good because he doesn't even moan but i can tell he's like turn off that <laughs> and I'm there like snooze and um, so I get up um straight away make breakfast because as soon as my eyes are open I swear that's the only thing that makes me get out of bed so I'm like I can eat I'll get out of bed um and then just like get ready for work um I'm pretty um set in my ways as in routines like i pretty much do the same thing every day um make the same foods eat the same foods and i like that control and massively like that control um and that's probably not necessarily a healthy thing all the time but i think as an athlete if you want to be an athlete there has to be like uh some things that uh that you don't change there's there has to be like a few variables um and if there are too many variables, like if you're going out to eat with your friends like three nights a week and 
just going out for a drink on a Friday, like after work and skipping just like your accessory work, like maybe once or twice a week, like that's not going to help you be the best athlete. Um, but again, that all comes back to what are your goals? Like, what do you want to achieve? Um, because everyone's different. Um, and I think it's important to have that balance definitely. But, um, again, I've completely come off the question you were asking me. You said <laughs> 90, 90 minutes. Of That's all right. That's cool. Um, is there anything you do do on a daily basis or actually in like, as you get into the gym, is there any kind of routines or, or habits or anything like that? Um, so my warm ups are pretty similar every day so i always do like um every day i either do uh like a 2k row um a 2k run or like uh 50 burpees like yesterday i did like 50 bar facing burpees for my warm-up um so i'll literally like get into the gym put my bags down i'm wearing trackies it's fucking cold at the moment so take my trackies off and then like literally get on my warm up straight away because they're all my warm ups are always something I don't I don't need to stretch before that like just get down and get it done um, and then I've got like what we call like activation work so that's gonna like get my body prepared for whatever I'm doing that day um, and that will probably take like an, another twenty minutes half an hour um, and I really think that work has been like invaluable. Um, in the sense of I'm quite lucky in the way my body moves. Like I've always been pretty mobile and I've never had any restrictions in that sense. Um, and I'm definitely not old, but as I'm getting older, like I was 19 when I started, so I could pretty much bounce back from anything like, like that. Yeah. Um, and I have noticed within the last couple of years that that is actually getting a little bit worse. So I have to be a little bit better with, um, like my warm ups and just moving my body and making sure I'm like supple, all my, all my muscles are ready. Um, so I think that activation work really has been invaluable. Um, and that is something that I do every day. So that is definitely like a ritual. Um, they change, they're not always the same, but it always, always the same idea um, and the same sort of time scale. So I'll do like a 10 minute getting my heart rate up, like my row, my run, um, or burpees or something like that. And then I'll do uh, activation work. So that's like lunges, wall squats, like straight arm pull-ups, um, kettlebell, um, like straight arm press and stuff like that. So that's going to get me prepared for whatever, if, whatever lift I'm doing. Or um, even if I'm not necessarily doing like a lift or anything, I'll always do those two bits of work. So I always do like my warm up and then my activation and then yeah. accessory after I've done my full session. Okay. There's, there's one thing I'm always interested in is do you use your phone when you're training? Uh, this is something that literally drives me insane. So I really shouldn't, but I do. Um, I don't, I don't sit on my phone and like text and be like chat to like people and, but I do like definitely like in between lifts and stuff like I'll sit and like and it's like mindlessly like scrolling down Instagram and that's something that now I'm much more aware of because I'm like as soon as I'm doing it I'm like I shouldn't be fucking doing this why am I doing this I'm not focused on what I'm doing I'm focused on like watching someone fall over a box on Instagram like that's not that's not gonna help me do like perform my back squats better um so yeah that's something that i definitely do do and i wish i didn't but to like it's never and it will always be in like the beginning or the end of my session like never in the middle um like my phone's away and gone yeah um, in my bag so i'd never be like in the middle of a really hard workout and then straight at the end like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen because you're lying on the floor going <gasps> yeah <laughs> yeah it's cool. more important to get my breath back than look at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, um, that's like, honestly, you've been awesome. An awesome podcast. Um, you've touched on some real kind of knowledge bombs there and some, some good truth there as well in terms of mindset. And there's a few things that really correlate with what I, what I teach. That's awesome. Cool. And I'll let you get back to those kittens as well. Oh my, I almost forgot about the kittens.